I want to show you today another module from the past set collection. Also, this one is available for free. I hope in the near future to check out also the paid modules. Uh, this one is called Ice Trade. Super, super interesting. Uh, delay slash sampler slash granular with pitch shifting and time stretching separately. Really interesting stuff. Um, I have here a simple voice with Opolus from uh, Vult, which I can play with my MIDI keyboard just so I have something to feed into Ice Tray. Right, a nice FM voice. Now, uh, as you can see, I have this voice going directly to the mixer, right? And I will use ice trays in a separate uh, track. You can use it also to process directly the sound, but there is no dry wet control or something like this. Uh, it will basically process the sound as it is. And um, so I chose just for this demonstration to use it um, as, with another channel. Now, basically what we have here, we have six uh, sorts of uh, recorders or samplers that will record the incoming audio, right? Those are the cubes and each of them has um, three states. There is either off, like when it's black like this, there is other playback when it's a, when it's a bit um, darker and it's also, there is also recording when it's brighter, just like this, right? So there are three states that can change um, more or less uh, automatically, depending on this freeze control, right? This, this is sort of probability to the changing of states between frozen and not frozen and disabled also, so recording, playback, and disabled. Right, for now it's at 50%, and you can see that it's just doing its own thing. It's moving between the ice cubes, sometimes recording, sometimes disabling, sometimes playing it back. And we can change the internal clock and also the recording um, length with this control here. It's called clock, but it's basically the record length. For now, it's one second. If I make it shorter, you can see the ice cubes are changing also quicker. If I make it longer, let's say about 3.5, they will change slower. And also the recording will be longer, right? So now I will send this voice to um opala what have i done i will send this voice to um ice tray and i will just start playing a bit and you will see that it will record the sound play it back um really interesting stuff no hands right this is the playback from ice tray right so basically it will like this move between the ice cubes and will record it will play back and it will also disable a few of the cubes right now we can control this we can have more control for example if we turn this frozen um, knob all the way to the right now the states will not change and I can change them manually so for example now if I click them once Right now they will all play back and I can choose one ice tray. Or oh, you know what, let's actually disable, disable like four and we have now two um, ice cubes. Now I can set one to record. Right? And now it will change between the cubes. Right, and here I can record something else. Right, quite cool. Now there is also, <laughs> there is also pitch shifting um, that will pitch the shift up or down and will also change the speed, but there is also a uh, time stretching. I will show you this in a second. Um, right, but let's uh, um, add some pitch shifting. So here basically we have the um, speed control, right? We have here um, two controls. If we change, for example, the upper control to be two, then the ratio will be two to one, right? So it will play back or it will record a double speed, right? So let's do this. I will change this to two and now I will record another I 
I can take this also to four, right? And then the ratio will be four to one, which is two octaves up. Right? <laughs> So cool, and I can make this also a ratio of one to two, so basically an octave down, right? If I change the lower knob here to two, right? And actually it will snap also to the values. So if you have 2.1, it will still be two, I guess. Right, so let's record another one, and now it will pitch shift it down, um, and we'll also change the speed. I can also change this in the right click menu, I can change this to pitch correction, which will be time stretching basically. So the pitch will stay the same, but just the speed will, uh, speed of playback will change. Right, so if I turn this on, the module will be quite CPU intensive now. If I turn on the, the CPU meter, you can see it's quite, quite heavy on the CPU um, in this mode. Right, so you want to, want, want to check this out, but now let's say, for example, that I will take it, um, I don't know, somewhere here, let's say about 8.5 or 8, right, and record something. Let's record again with a bit uh, slower, but this will only change the speed of playback or recording actually. It will not change the pitch. I will turn off this. Uh, no, you know it for a second. Right? So this was the same pitch, but just played quicker. Now if I turn this off, right, if I turn this pitch correction off, you will see that we, the CPU usage is very, very, even more than reasonable. It's quite, quite uh, light on CPU, so you can use many ice trays as long as you don't have the uh, time stretching or pitch correction activated, right? So now we have this sequence. Right now we have here a clock input that will basically sync the um, recording times to an incoming clock and it will be, it will have a limit of 10 seconds, just like the clock basically. Right, and we can also have a clock for playback, right? So if for example I have here a clock multiplied by four, let's say, let's say. Right, you can create interesting rhythms like this. And now we can add also repetitions, right? So how uh, many times each ice cube will play back. And now there is something interesting here. There is a playback clock reset um, position. By default, it's on. Now what it means, I have here recordings, right, that are longer than the time of the clock. We can see that they will always start from the beginning of the recording of the sample. But if I turn this off, they will always continue playing. Right, and they will not restart from the beginning. And I can add repeats to this. Now we can also change the pattern. Before we uh, go to the pattern, actually, I want to show you the feedback. Now the feedback, unlike a normal delay, it will not uh, decay the sound because here we are dealing with um, mostly samples. What it will do, it will feedback the output back to the input. So if, for example, now I take this um, to, let's say, um, four, which will be two octaves down, right? And I 
add, add some feedback and I change one of them, let's say uh, cube four, I will change it to record. What it will do, it will record the output back into the input and will take it basically two octaves down. Right, let's disconnect the clock for a second. Which was was very slow, I guess. So now let's take it up. Right, I have some feedback. Right, it will record a bit. Right? <laughs> so basically it will feed back this output back into itself and you can like this create all sorts of different textures. Really lovely things. Let me show you now the pattern. And let me bring back the clock for a second, just so we have something a bit more rhythmic. It's easier to see. Right, so now if I change the pattern all the way to the left, or left, basically it will add randomness to the, to the way the uh, ice cubes are being chosen. You see now there is a pattern to it. If I take it to the left, you see there is some randomness all the way left. Of course, it will be random. They will just, just jump from one another. Right, but to the right it will change the patterns basically how it moves, it will still stay stable and repetitive, right, but it will basically change the patterns. You can create different rhythms. By the way, the uh, right-click menu, you can also clear the cubes if you want to record something new. But something really interesting you can try is using an external clock. And this is where the granular part mostly is coming from, a, an external clock, but at higher rates. And you get this granular effect where it's scanning through the, scanning through the um, recordings, right? So here I have an LFO, right? And I'm going to use this LFO quicker and quicker to switch between the cubes. Listen to this effect, it reminds a bit of granular. Together with the repeat it works really nicely. something cool you can do, cool, something cool, <laughs> something nice you can try, is using a, like a random source to change the rate of the LFO, right? So I'm going to trigger this random source with the LFO, create a sort of a modulation feedback loop, and then modulate the frequency of the LFO. Right, maybe change the pattern a bit. for hours. Uh, such such an interesting, let me mute this for a second, such an interesting concept. Again, path set just like with um, glass pane that uh, we'll see in a second, every an example actually. Um, just like glass pane, another really interesting, um, fresh, I don't know, like something like it's, it's taking advantage of software and taking it to high, uh, to uh, higher levels, I guess. I don't know how to explain this, but just really interesting concepts, really interesting ideas. 
Um, I really enjoy this um, collection. Again, I will hope, uh, let me show you them also. I hope to get into the um, um, commercial um, modules as well. Lots of granular um, uh, sequencers I see here. Right, lots of different things um, that I can't wait actually to start exploring already and share my thoughts and results with you. And um, for now, I have a couple of examples that I want to show you uh, different uses. For example, here I have a sequence, again, glass pane sequencing FM, uh, the FM operator. <laughs> Such, such a cool sequencer. Um, so glass pane sequencing FM operator. Uh, then this, again, a copy of it is going to ice tray and ice tray is set here, as you can see. Right, the frozen is again at 50%, which means that it will always change record, playback, disable stuff. I also have here, I'm sequencing um, the multiplication of the speed. Right, so sometimes it will also record at double speed and double pitch also an octave up. Um, right, so it will create a nice effect. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Just amazing. So cool, seriously, really cool. Also the patterns are all the way left, so it will jump also randomly between the ice cubes of the recordings. Such a cool concept, really just such interesting and fresh. I don't know how to how to how to explain this. Um, I have here another example, more for creating another layer for drums or effects for drums. A bit glitchy, a bit not. I have here Zoom A um, sequencing tremor two as a kick drum and hi hat, and also tremor as a snare. Right, it will sound like this. By the way, when you save the patch and close it, Ice Tray will save the recordings, right? So you can always go back if you have something, you can always go back to it. Um, this is also important. Or it's also a fun feature. Uh, so what I did here, I sent the drums into Ice Tray and I froze it. So now I got this uh, nice rhythm. Um, right, I have some modulation on the repeats. So it will stutter a bit. And this is going to a bandpass filter and some panning modulation. I will solo this. Right, again, just adding another layer, another interesting effect source. Right, and this is from drums. Yes, so again, um, Ice Tray, available for free from Pathset. Please, please check out also his commercial collections. He has two collections that are commercial, that are paid. Um, go support this guy because he's doing really interesting things. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Go have fun with Ice Tray. Cheers.